Hi, my name is Romain Vivier. I'm a solutions architect manager at AWS, and I've been working around customer experience technology and personalization over the past 15 years. I have the honor to be accompanied by Tane Ox, chief you. technology officer at Ticketek. Today, Tane and I will focus on how to implement personalized experiences at scale, leveraging machine learning, and more specifically, Amazon Personalize. In this presentation, I will start by covering the different dimensions of hyper-personalized experiences, as well as the state-of-the-art recommender systems, and we'll finish by a brief overview of Amazon Personalize before handing it over to Tane, who will walk you through their journey implementing personalization at Ticketek. Allow me first to state the obvious. Personalization is table stake nowadays and is expected by every customer, especially our millennials and Gen Z generations. Personalized experiences boost customer loyalty and drive sustained engagement, and it shows. When consumers are captivated by a credit browsing experience, they are more likely to increase engagement with the given application and continue using the service the business is providing for a longer period of time. In fact, a recent McKinsey study shares that 71% of consumers now see personalization as the standard level of service when engaging with businesses. Organizations that have implemented personalization realize a 10 to 15% lift in revenue. And for companies that run fully digital operations with a direct-to-consumer model, personalization drives even more value, achieving up to 25% lift, 25 lift in revenue. What this also means is that personalization no longer fits into the nice to have category. It's a must have and 60% of consumers say they will be repeat customers after a personalized experience. Now, what do we mean by personalized customer experience? The reality is everything is personal or can be personalized. Just taking the example of a you know, simple home page, we can Start by personalizing which shells to display or in which order to display them. Going one level down, for each of those shells, you can fully personalize the list of items displayed in that shelf, making it fully dynamic, or even reorder uh, in a personalized fashion the list of statically, uh, static manually um, uh, created items. Going one level down, again, for each item in your shelf, you can personalize the item's image or description to make it even more appealing to that specific users, hence increasing potential engagement. Most of you probably already experienced that uh, with Netflix as they personalize the artwork based on the user's profile and previous interactions. But it is also done by retailers Yellow, a pioneer in frozen food in the US, have also pushed hyper-personalization to the point of personalizing the product descriptions and images shown to customers. Now, a web page is just one of the many touch points that a brand has with their customers. Users have their own preferences when it comes to the channel or the device uh, so that you know, they interact, interact with your brand or service. They will also do it on their own time of the day, on time of the week or the month, and don't like to be interrupted when busy doing something else. So even though it provides another opportunity to reach out to your consumers with the right content at the right time and through the right channel, it also adds another layer of complexity to manage in order to deliver that consistent and connected messaging across the many channels available. And this underlines even more the importance of ideally having a centralized view of your customers that encompasses first their explicit preferences about how they want to be serviced, but also uh, a record of the many interactions that you have across your brand's touch points. Finally, having more personal information on their location, age range, gender, and so on will be crucial. And to be able to serve those personalized experiences in a consistent fashion, it is crucial to have a single recommendation engine, engine being used and integrated across all channels. So let's double click on this recommendation engine and discuss the different approaches. 
All right, I will not spend a lot of time on rule-based personalization relying on manual and often intuition-based segmentation. It was the best we had 10 years ago, and it delivered, I'd say, you know, pretty great uplift for many companies at the time, but it just doesn't scale considering the high expectations of our customers who desire that one-to-one -one experience. So indeed, there's a limit to what can be you know, specified with rules, and such approach quickly becomes impossible to maintain, not to mention that those rules and segments are often not driven from the data, but from what marketers think is the best or most logical match. Now, if we turn to recommender systems powered by machine learning, we've got our usual suspects. Collaborative filtering has been a very popular way to do product recommendations online, and I would say it's collaborative because it predicts, uh, predicts a given customer's preferences on the basis of other customers' interactions. Think of it as a customer with similar interactions have also viewed those items type of algorithm. The pros that are that it's simple, right? It, it scales very well with a lot of data. The cons are it is essentially based on interaction data and doesn't handle well cold and new items with no interactions. It can also sometimes recommend some items that our human logic wouldn't expect, which is just related to the nature of the algorithm. Content-based filtering tries to match items attributes to a user's profile that has been built out of previous interacted items attributes. The pros are that it doesn't need data from other users to make recommendations. It also comes across as very logical. Like if I purchased a lot of shoes in the past, it will recommend shoes related items to me. The cons are that it lacks diversity and can only make recommendations on existing interest of the user. It also rely, uh, relies on hand engineered features, which requires effort and domain knowledge. An hybrid approach essentially combines content-based and collaborative filtering to try to get the best uh, from both worlds. Deep learning's popularity has grown over the past years alongside with compute power and was notably adopted by YouTube or Amazon for their recommender systems. Deep learning models are large neural networks that are really able to cope with that complex interaction patterns and user items relationships. There are various flavors of deep learning models, and Amazon Personalize is typically using a recurrent neural networks, as they are very capable when it comes to capturing the notion of temporal sequence and dynamics of interactions, which are particularly useful in the context of recommendations. So how straightforward is it to implement a highly performing deep learning recommender system? Well, not that straightforward, unfortunately. First, you need data scientists and ML engineers that have specific knowledge in that field, as recommender systems are very different beasts from traditional tabular data um, classification models or even computer vision models, as an example. You will also need uh, to consider the deployment, the high availability, and the monitoring uh, associated with those models. Ideally, you also want your recommender systems to leverage positive and negative interactions in real time in order to adapt its recommendations at the next opportunity, for example, at the next page load. Implementing that real-time feedback loop requires a lot of data engineering, including real-time data streaming pipelines and online low-latency feature stores. Last but not least, your system needs to handle new users and new products effectively. When a new user lands on your platform, your system needs to offer a default set of recommendations, but immediately adapt based on its first interactions. You typically cannot wait the next day to update your recommendations, as you will likely miss the opportunity to influence your customer in the moment. You also need to cater for when a new item is introduced in your catalog. In that scenario, you need to implement some form of multi-arm bandit algorithm on top of your recommender system to allow for new products to be surfaced and tested against your users. 
this complexity is typically what we've tried to solve for our customers with Amazon Personalize. So Amazon Personalize is typically based on Amazon's 20 years worth of experience implementing personalization and product or content recommendations on our own digital properties. It really shares that same DNA as our Amazon.com, Prime Video, and Amazon Music, for example, as we've packaged the learnings and the automation, uh, as well as the pre-trained model for customers to use with minimal efforts and investment. So how does it work? Amazon Personalize will use your data to incrementally train the underlying pre-trained deep learning models in order to make the recommender system specific to your catalog and users. To do so, it leverages three types of data. First, user interactions. Any kind of user events, for example, clicks, purchasing events, page visits. At the minimum, it will need a, a pair of user ID and product ID with a timestamp. Second data set is the item metadata data set. So anything related to your product's details, like price point, category, description, essentially everything you have in your catalog that can be you know, used. Finally, user metadata, things like you know, location or age, for example. Then what happens behind the scene when you have uploaded those three data sets? Well, Amazon will first process and inspect the data, then identify what features are useful for the model. It will then train and optimize a personalized model that is really customized to the data um, before then hosting it and scaling the model according to your traffic. Key features are, you know, that are packaged as part of that service are first, that ability to provide that real-time adaptive recommendations to the users as they interact with the digital touch points. Personalized can also provide context-aware recommendations by providing additional data as part of the interaction data set. For example, location, device to use, or time of the day. Filters are built into the solution and provides a, provides a syntax for you to filter out, let's say, purchased or non-available items. Uh, also filter the recommendations on a specific product category, for example. It also allows you to influence the result of your recommender systems by uh, either injecting specific promoted products or by also putting more weights on certain products for which you, for example, have a, a higher margin. Amazon Personalize also addresses the cold start issue notably by providing a control between exploration uh, of your recent catalog and exploitation of the recommendations to drive more engagement. For example, you can specify that 20% of the recommendations provided as part of the request have to be products introduced less than a week ago. Finally, Personalize also have built-in natural language processing models. And this actually uh, allows for extraction of meanings and features from your product's description or any text metadata to be used, again, as part of the model string process. All right, so for our more technical audience, I'll spend a couple of minute, uh, minutes going through a sample architecture of a real-time recommendation solution powered by Personalize. So let's assume we already have a, a trained model or solution in Personalize. We've deployed a specific version of our model to a scalable endpoint, also known as a campaign. On the left, we have an application that displays product recommendations to its user. And to retrieve the recommendation, it will call the Personalize APIs via an Amazon API Gateway plus AWS Lambda. This call could be done within your application API layer or from wherever it makes more sense as per your architecture. Now, however, remember, we also want our recommendations to change as the user interacts with the application. So we need to pass those clickstream events to personalize in some ways. For that, we use API Gateway and Amazon Kinesis in that diagram to stream the event. But again, you might be using another solution like Snowplow or customer data platform to do so. 
And then we consume that event by calling a lambda function that we'll call the event tracker put event API to update the user interactions online feature stores that is within Personalize. This way, the next time recommendations are requested by the application, the recommender will take into account those latest and freshest events and will adapt the recommendations. All right, so that's it for the Amazon personalized overview. I'll now hand it over to Tane, who will share his experience implementing Amazon Personalize. Thanks, Romain. Hello, I'm Tane Oaks, the Chief Technology Officer at Ticketek, a global leader in ticketing, data, and technology with over 40 years experience in ticketing major events and partnering with the world's premier venues. With 16 million registered customers and over 30 million tickets sold per year, fans and innovation is at the heart of everything we do. Along with ticketing, we provide sporting organizations, venues, promoters, content creators, media, and technology partners with a single destination for analytics, data science, research, personalization, and advanced digital marketing. In the being a data-driven enterprise at Ticketek, we have a number of initiatives to achieve advanced customer engagement to these partners. One of these initiatives is the efficiency of client campaigns, marketing, upsell, and promotions enhanced through personalized experiences at Ticketek. Simply put, we wanted to drive an uplift in conversion rates across Ticketek digital assets with an enriched, personalized customer experience driven out of the Ticketek customer engagement MarTech platform. So, at Ticketek, we face three key challenges in delivering an enriched customer personalized experience. First, the expanding business footprint across live entertainment, ticketing, and venues. We had siloed data everywhere that resulted in fragmented data sources. This distorted the knowledge we had on our customers, products, etc., across the group. Secondly, because we had siloed data across the business, there was limited ability to access actionable data. This resulted in cumbersome processes evolving to obtain actionable data. Finally, our business worked off their siloed data without alignment across the group which challenged the ability for a harmonized MarTech platform across the business. Faced with these challenges, how do we overcome them? First, we looked at what was one digital asset, which was the most ready for us to be used in delivering an enriched, personalized customer experience. We decided on the Ticketek newsletter. This is a weekly newsletter emailed out to customers with six or more shows advertised for sale. Before we introduced personalization, customers received newsletters that were constructed based on a rules-based approach with content based on the location within the country, such as Australia, of the registered customer. So everyone that lived in New South Wales got the same newsletter content around shows, and everyone that lived in Queensland got the same newsletter content around shows in that region. Now, with it driven out of a centralized MarTech platform, we use the customer sales, preference, and action data in that platform to remove any challenges that defragmentation of that data across silos could throw up. Second, simplified what we needed. Customer purchase and browsing interactions so as to get actionable data. Finally, we created excitement amongst all the stakeholders about the initiative to get alignment by rallying the teams with an AWS data lab engagement. This provided focus across the teams with a short, sharp engagement that had outputs of a functioning personalization engine powered by our shared data platform and Amazon Personalize into the Ticketek customer engagement platform. As mentioned, one of the key challenges was bringing together the stakeholders uh, for executing this initiative of personalization across the Ticketek newsletters. We identified three key stakeholder groups for delivering success for this initiative. First, technology, who developed and managed the real-time data streams and infrastructure of customer sales and product data within the Ticketek ticketing and data platforms that would power the recommendation process. Second, data science, 
who use the tools within the platform to build machine learning models on the customer sales and product data within the ticketing platform. Finally, marketing, who had who access the customer engagement platform of the Ticketek ticketing data and platform to access customers to activate the recommendations through the digital assets of the platform. These were the three stakeholder groups that came together in the three-day AWS Data Lab engagement with the focus of delivering a recommendations engine to drive personalization across the Ticketek newsletters. Key for success was each stakeholder being fully enabled to action their responsibilities in the AWS Data Lab engagement to deliver the completion of the initiative. The output was the team successfully built a recommendation process for Ticketek newsletters on AWS within the Ticketek ticketing and data platform. This allowed our MarTech systems to uplift the personalization in the customer engagement across the Ticketek newsletter, replacing the existing rules-based approach to newsletters. What were the secrets to the success within delivering this initiative at Ticketek? We set our expectations of the initiative upfront, allowing us to manage these expectations by focusing on a digital asset most ready to use. This was enriched customer personalization of the Ticketek newsletter. Our approach was speed over perfection. We focused on launching the capability and then build on it instead of waiting for a faultless product to market. With speed over perfection approach, you need to keep it simple. We did that by utilizing the existing technology infrastructure at Ticketek and introduced simple serverless products to deliver a fast scalable outcome. With any initiative, you must plan for measurement upfront and to understand where you take it and how you measure success. Then be prepared to iterate on the capability based on the measurements of success that we were observing. Finally, be resilient. With personalization, we had to experiment and accept that some experiments would fail to deliver the desired outcome. So what does the person Ticketek personalized recommendation engine look like? It's actually very simple. We have a shared data platform built on Snowflake, running out of AWS, which is the data warehouse for Ticketek. This has structured real-time data on enriched customer data points, sales, events, and customer engagement across the platform, such as user behavior on the website. This data is published through to Amazon Personalize on a scheduled basis to provide a personalized rank list of events on Ticketek recommended for each customer. This data is then published through to the Ticketek customer engagement platform running on the Braze SaaS platform, which allows the marketing team to activate and experiment with this personalized event recommendations for each customer through the Ticketek newsletter. The outcome to the customer is a newsletter with a set of event tiles that are personalized and positioned based on the rank list output from the personalized Amazon Personalize. The science of matching shows to people has delivered great results. 250% improvement in the click-through of conversion rate for the Ticketek newsletters, an increase of 49% more tickets sold per email opened, a little over five times greater diversity of products featured across the Ticketek newsletter. I'd say that was a success. One of the key takeaways I'd like to leave you with is be resilient. We didn't give up when we encountered problems. Some of the learnings and optimizations we made along the way were removing previously purchased products, removing products that had sold out, regionalizing the recommendations, excluding low product images, sharing the placements with bookings, isolating the experiment, and reducing the experiment size. I want to finish on this point because it's very key to delivering the results that Ticketek achieved on this initiative. When we encounter problems, we fix them. Where are we going with this personalization at Ticketek? Well, we're rolling out personalization across the other digital assets at Ticketek. Personalization on pages in the tiles of the website, the mobile app, push notifications, and cross-sell opportunities.
Thanks, Danny, for sharing with us your story today. Thank you. To start your own personalization journey, please consider talking to your AWS account manager and engage our AWS Data Lab team to start building. As briefly mentioned before by Tony, AWS Data Lab offers accelerated joint engineering engagements between customers and AWS technical resources. It helps create tangible deliverables that accelerate machine learning and data analytics modernization initiatives. Customers leave the engagement with a, an architecture or working prototype that is custom fit to their needs, alongside with a path to production and deeper knowledge of AWS data analytics and machine learning services. Alternatively, access our public Amazon Personalize workshop on GitHub and benefit from our free tier to get started with Amazon Personalize at no cost. To continue your cloud journey, please visit skillbuilder.aws for more resources. Thank you again for your time, and we'd really appreciate your feedbacks to help us improve our sessions.